Hello everyone. Welcome to General Sciences Biology Module 20. Today's lesson is on mosses, ferns and gymnosperms. I'm Ritrisha from GK today and I'll be taking you through this. Firstly, mosses. What are bryophytes? The common word for bryophytes is moss, which are the first land plants in context with evolution of plants. The branch of science that deals with bryophytes is called bryology. Mosses don't have a vascular tissue such as xylem and phloem, which we find in plants of the higher order. Due to this, they are also known as atrechids, which means no trachea. In India, S.R. Kashyap did a commendable job in the studies of bryophytes and that's why he's called the father of Indian bryology. Why are mosses known as the amphibians of plant kingdom? Bryophytes or mosses are called the amphibians of plant kingdom. As the term amphibian suggests, they can survive on both water and land. They can live on land but for reproduction and fertilization they need water. Bryophytes were the first plant in which alternation of generation was seen for the first time. The embryophytes develop as gametophyte, then they undergo mitosis, they become gametes, then sporophytes, then spores, then undergo meiosis and then again gametophytes are formed. What are some interesting facts about bryophytes? One of the famous bryophytes is peat moss. Its botanical name is Sphagnum. It grows in swamps and damp areas and is one of the most economically important bryophytes. In World War I, peat moss was used as dressing cotton for wounded soldiers. It is obtained from Sphagnum. Psychometrella patens is increasingly used in biotechnology. Prominent example are the identification of moss genes with implications for crop improvement or human health and the safe production of complex biopharmaceuticals in the moss bioreactor. Mosses play an important role in controlling soil erosion. They perform this function by providing ground cover and absorbing water. So they bind the soil together. Mosses are also indicators of air pollution under Conditions of poor air quality, few mosses will exist. So if there are no mosses in a region, it is safe to assume that that region has polluted air. Peat moss is used as fuel to heat homes and generate electricity. Bryophytes, in fact, are among the first organisms to grow up in areas that have been destroyed by a fire or volcanic eruptions. So when greenery appears, mosses are the first ones to come to existence. Why are mosses haploid in most of their lives? Now, bryophytes commonly grow close together in clumps or mats in damp or shady locations. They do not have flowers or seeds and their simple leaves cover the thin, wiry stems. In bryophytes, the dominant phase of life is not the plant itself, but one of its phases in reproduction called gametophytes. Now, gametophyte contains a single set of chromosomes which is why it's a haploid and this is why bryophytes are in haploid state most of their lives. At certain times, mosses produce spore capsules which may appear as beak-like capsules borne aloft on thin stalks. These gametophyte produces male or female or both gametes. Gametes is a term we use for sperms or ovum in lower plants and these are produced by mitosis. When male and female gametes fuse, they make a diploid zygote which develops by repeated mitotic cell divisions into a multicellular sporophyte. This sporophyte is a diploid because it is a product of fusion of two haploid gametes. So now this one has two chromosomes. Now sporophytes are not independent and they cannot exist on their own. They need nutritional support from their haploid sisters gametophytes. Now this diploid phase sporophytes again produces sex cells via meiosis. Now these cells are called spores. During making of spores the chromosomes pair and separate once again to form single sets again. The spores are therefore once again haploid and they develop into a haploid gametophyte. 
this is how the life cycle of bryophyte goes on so the dominant phase as we learn here is a gametophyte now we come to ferns what are pteridophytes pteridophytes are commonly known as ferns there are around 12000 species of ferns many of them are used for decoration or as ornamental plants what was the evolution of ferns like so in the evolutionary stages ferns are next to bryophytes they are more advanced than mosses bryophytes don't have vascular tissues but ferns have both xylem and phloem thus they are the first vascular plants in terms of evolution of plant species they have stems leaves and roots like other vascular plants further in case of bryophytes the dominant phase of life is gametophytes however in pteridophytes it reverses and all uh, types of plants after pteridophytes it is different so in pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms the dominant phase of life becomes sporophyte this sporophyte is not only independent but also long living pteridophytes differ from the advanced plants on the basis of their reproduction procedures they differ from gymnosperms and angiosperms as they do not have either flowers or seeds what are the economical importance of ferns most of the ferns are have ornamental values they are grown as ornamental plants in gardens and homes some of them such as marsley are rich sources of starch and used as food material parts of the pteridium aquilinum or pteridium esculentum are used as cooked vegetables in japan but they are also believed to be responsible for the high rate of stomach cancer in japan so it's debatable whether they can be consumed as food or not it is also one of the world's most important agricultural weed especially in british highlands and often poisons cattle and horses dryopteris phyllis max is used as anti helminth meaning anti worm and it's used in pharmacies as well ferns as biofertilizers the smallest fern azolla has the capability of nitrogen fixation and is used as a biofertilizer especially in parts of southeast asia azolla has been used for thousands of years in china in paddy cultivation it is also known as a mosquito fern because of a myth that when this plant is in bloom the mosquito can cross its covering to the water in the water body to lay eggs so it is a myth it's not yet proven coming to gymnosperms what are gymnosperms so gymnosperms are called so because they have naked ovules or seeds that so their seeds don't have any covering in terms of plant evolution they're the first seed bearing plants and they come right after ferns they're inferior to angiosperms because in angiosperms the ovules are covered so the seeds are protected in this case seeds are not protected common gymnosperms inc include conifers cycad gynco and nettles what are some interesting facts about gymnosperms so the tallest plant in the world coast redfoot of california is a gymnosperm some gymnosperms are called the living fossils because many of them represent the one of the few if not the only surviving members of a taxonomic group with no close living relatives so they are one of a kind cycas and gnico biloba are examples of living fossils so these plants had to have no close relatives and they are one of the very few which represent a certain group they are the only surviving members hence the term living fossils canada balsam the sticky colorless and odorless liquid used in optical industry is obtained from a gymnosperm ephedrine is obtained from ephedra which is a naturally growing gymnosperm in rajasthan sago which is a staple food in new guinea and some other countries is obtained from cycas revoluta and shiklosa is obtained from pinus gerardiana known as shiklosa pine 
So Shagosa is one of the most important cash crops of tribal people residing in Kinnor district of Himachal Pradesh, which seems to be the only place in India where Shikosa pines are found. Sera wood is obtained from many species of gymnosper. Similarly, chur wood is obtained from chur pine or pinus longifolia. The pinus species of gymnosperms contain the winged pollen grains. That's all for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channel GK Today on YouTube. Until the next video, goodbye.